literally changed the direction and the future of the town. In the 1880s and 90s, clear up through the 1950s, it was the one market that drove the town. The citrus came along in the late 1880s, took over the entire agrarian base, created the economy, and then by the 1950s, after World War II, the population started expanding out of LA and people looking for and so citrus began getting pulled up. There's very few acres of citrus left in Redlands itself. It's about 36 square miles. You'll see murals just recently painted on buildings featuring citrus themes. Uh, we have events that feature citrus. The city farms almost 200 acres of citrus as part of its public open space. So it's still there, but it doesn't have the economic clout or the political clout that it used to have. Radlands uh, had at one time more than 20 individual packing houses at the height of its, from let's say the early 1900s to the 1930s. Then uh, consolidations have taken place, of course, and now we're down to one, Redlands Foothill Groves, which has been around since the 1920s. We're a grower-owned packing house. What that means is that if, if you own some citrus in Redlands or Riverside or San Bernardino, you can come in and you sign up a, an agreement uh, allowing us to harvest your fruit when it's ready. We'll, we'll handle the picking and the hauling and the packing. Uh, I, I think the biggest thing is that it's owned by the grower. We're lucky at Redlands Foothill. We're lucky that we have loyal growers. They, they know that they want to stay in, in, in growing citrus and they want to keep Redlands Foothill going. I talk to a lot of the growers and, and, and uh, they understand what they need to do to stay farming or growing citrus and of course you know to keep, maintain and keep Redlands Foothill being the only packing house in, in San Bernardino County which is, it's it's really huge. They've been taking groves to build warehouses. That started up the big deal. Uh, to, to, as far as I'm concerned, the, the biggest uh, problem has been that, I guess, big corporations will come in and start looking for flat land, and they just remove the trees, and they will build these huge warehouses. But you, you have a whole bunch of warehouses and, and uh, uh, coming in and having their distribution centers down here mainly, and, and they're coming down right there in, in our neighborhoods, you know, so it's, it's uh, they're here. Uh, what really started uh, putting the pressure on the orange business here in Redlands is just the, the urban expansion and the cost of land. And so the commercial growers could sell their land for quite a bit of money and then buy with that same amount of money 10 times more acreage up in the Central Valley. And so right now, even though Southern California was the birthplace of the fresh pack citrus industry here in the U.S. Right now, Southern California has something less than 2% of the total citrus that's produced in California. There are 4 million people, 4 million eaters in the Inland Empire, and that would certainly be plenty of appetite to support a number of small local growers here in Redlands and Riverside. And so what we did was we, uh, we set up the Inland Orange Conservancy. Uh, we recruited um, some local growers, Riverside um, and Redlands primarily. And so we did that, and we did that for about 10 years. And then something, a huge occurrence happened uh, that kind of forced us to kind of change our direction. Um, and that is uh, an invasive species came into our area, the Asian citrus psyllid. Okay, so before the challenge was just, let's find a market for these oranges. And now the challenge is, how do we get these oranges to, these trees to keep from dying because of this invasive species? The real critical thing is we might lose our small farmers here. And once they're gone, 
you're never going to get any sort of, of growing vegetables, growing avocados, growing oranges back again. So it isn't just an orange thing. It's our farmer base, which we have the richest base in Southern California of small growers, might disappear because of this. The citrus industry meant a lot. Its heritage has left a lot. The descendants of all of it, the, the, the workers, the owners, the marketers, uh, have left their own brand on our history. Uh, that Some of it we can't, nor do we want to always escape. Other of it that still compels for greater understanding. Uh, I understand why people view it with nostalgia, but on the other hand, every time I bite into a piece of food off the grove here, I think, no, this is real. This is the real deal. And so there's still some of it left, and maybe in my own way, I'm just happy to be part of the past that's continuing into the present.